Today I speak to Professor James McQueen at Radboud University Nijmegen in the Netherlands. He's a professor of speech and learning and has been doing research on language for over 30 years. Nijmegen is a leading facility in the field of language learning. They combine behavioral science, neuroscience, psycholinguistics, linguistics, and a genetic approach. McQueen's research focuses on learning and processing in spoken language. He seeks ways in which knowledge about how, about how sounds and words are learned in native and non-native language to improve language education. Thanks so much for coming on. It's nice to be speaking to you. Great. So you know a lot about learning language, especially from, from research. And so you're, you're, looking for go you're looking for ways to improve teaching methods and also developed evidence-based methods for training and language learning. And what have you, what, what were the most remarkable results you had so far? And how can they be applied? That's a, that's a big question. Uh, so um, uh, one line of research has been looking at uh, how we learn uh, new vocabulary uh, mm -hmm. and uh, The, the idea there is that um, uh, there are processes by which um, we improve our ability to remember words through, through doing nothing at all, that is, through sleeping. So uh, if you learn some new words uh, and then are tested on them the same day, uh, you show a particular pattern of behavior. Uh, but if you are tested on the same the new words the next day or the next week, so after you've had an opportunity to sleep, uh, then your response to those words changes. What happens is that those words uh, become more fully integrated into your existing dictionary of words in your head, into your mental lexicon, and actually start to fully function as words uh, after that process of uh, sleep-related consolidation. Mm -hmm. And that's that's uh, that's uh, an exciting uh, finding because it it opens opens the door for uh, uh, a, a apparently kind of science fiction idea uh, of trying to improve the way people uh, learn vocabulary. Uh, the idea would be that um, if you've learned some new words, then you hear about those new words, you hear those words again spoken at a volume that's not too loud to wake you up, but mm -hmm. while you're asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and colleagues have shown that reactivation of memories during sleep can uh, um, actually uh, boost your, your memory for those words the next day. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the fantasy idea is, and that's what, what we want to try to work on with respect to application, is to try to turn that into reality and show indeed that Prevent, presenting new words to, to people uh, as, they're, as, they're, as they're sleeping uh, can enhance their learning. Imagine you're trying to, you've moved to a new country and you're trying to learn your French, um, mm -hmm. to increase your French vocabulary or your Spanish vocabulary, wherever you are. Then you learn some new words and then you go to bed that night and very quietly played in the background, you hear those words again. And the theory of this memory the sleep associated consolidation process and the results that we already have suggest that that should really boost your ability to uh, to remember those words the the next day mm -hmm. so that's a that's a, um that's an application that we would like to see realized in the in the near future but i, I you know it's it's still uh, it's still uh, uh, a dream rather rather than uh, rather than a, a reality at the moment yeah so that's one that one interesting finding yeah mm -hmm. And now this is only about words that that the person has learned the day before, right? It's not about it's not possible with new words, with completely new words. Uh, so the the results suggest that when if you're going to present words to people while they're asleep, it should be reactivation of words that mm -hmm. you've uh, you've heard before. It's important to stress that. So it's not. A crazy idea which is that you can just learn some completely new words mm -hmm. by only hearing them when you're asleep mm -hmm. in other words 
uh, ideas uh, like that developed, uh, you know, back in the 1970s or the 1980s, you know, just put your Walkman on and uh, listen mm -hmm. to some new words while you're sleeping. And there's no evidence that that works. Mm -hmm. But the, the, what is possible, uh, and there is evidence for that already, uh, from Bjorn Rasch's group mm -hmm. uh, in, in Switzerland, is that presenting words that you have already learned reinforces and strengthens that uh, your, your memory for those words if you hear them during a sleep. Yeah. And do you think there will be other applications to learn while being asleep than uh, just learning words, maybe sentences, grammar, understanding so better? What that's else? so that's exactly the direction we would want to to take uh, the, this project in that we're that we're hoping to get funded mm -hmm. uh, we would want to expand we would build on uh, what we know about word learning in, in in at least two other directions so one would be uh, in the direction as you just said of uh, of looking at, at at the sentence level and asking whether that you can see improvements in in the learning of grammar so again, let's take French an example. If you're trying to learn which which nouns are masculine and which are feminine in French, uh, some simple aspect of grammar like that, and you've learned some of that knowledge, some of that knowledge uh, 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 during the day, then potentially, and this we don't know whether this works yet or not, but potentially representing the, those uh, those those nouns with the uh, with the uh, appropriate articles, mm -hmm. so le whatever and la whatever. Uh, um, Uh, during sleep may enhance your your memory for those for that knowledge too. And the other direction is to is to go in the direction of uh, improving uh, sound learning. So one of the challenges that uh, that uh, anybody has who tries to learn a new language is that uh, it comes with having to learn new sounds. So mm -hmm. it can be very difficult to learn the new vowels of a of a language. Uh, it can be very difficult to learn particular new consonants uh, of a language. Um, uh, a classic example, of course, is uh, speakers of German who who have to learn in English the the th sound mm -hmm. that you have yeah. in uh, in 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 think, for example. Yes. So that's a hard sound to learn, and we know that uh, there's some indications from some labs in the states that sleep is also uh, beneficial for consolidating your knowledge about new sounds. So if you've learned how to interpret a th spoken by one speaker on one day, then after a night's sleep, you can, you can show the ability to generalize what you've learned about that new sound to the sp when you're listening to a speech of someone else, which, of course, is a critical part of really learning to understand, to be able to comprehend that, uh, that new sound. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, the idea would be potentially reactivation of your of your of the new sounds while you're sleeping could once again enhance your your memory for those for those sounds mm -hmm. so this is always about consolidation it's never about learning something new while being asleep right no no it's always about consolidation mm -hmm. that's right it's uh, yeah the the idea is that the the new material needs to get into the brain mm -hmm. uh, um, while you're awake uh, yeah. but then you take advantage of the the consolidation processes that happen naturally as we sleep mm -hmm. Uh, these the reactivation will happen internally, as it were, mm -hmm. uh, and there are processes by which the new information is then integrated into existing information that you know very well, mm -hmm. and this reactivation process is supposed to boost that uh, th those those consolidation processes. Yes, mm -hmm. and this could work with new sounds. Could it also work with uh, with accent reduction? That's that's possibly the case. We uh, we don't have immediate plans to, to look at that. Mm -hmm. um, most of the work that's been done has been on the perceptual side. You know, when you're lying asleep, then you can hear stuff, uh, and that hearing those new sounds can or words or bits of sentences can can boost your uh, comprehension abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that has any s consequences. For your, for your, for how accented you are as a speaker is something that we, that we would, we would need to investigate. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it would be interesting to think of ways in which, uh, in which uh, um, hearing uh, native-like 
utterances during sleep might potentially lead to accent reduction. But I've got no, I'm not aware of any evidence that's, uh, that's, that's looked at that question mm -hmm. yet. Okay. And do you think consolidation is always better while asleep? Or is it a possibility that if I learn, for instance, this morning, like I learn new words, and then I consolidate exactly the same way I would do while asleep just a few hours later? Do you think that the consolidation while being asleep is always better than consolidating at, at daytime? Or is there just a time saving of you don't? Well, I think there's, yeah. there's the time saving of uh, being being asleep and not doing anything else at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, there is evidence to suggest that the consoli these consolidation processes are more continuous. It's not that you only do them when you're asleep and you never do them while you're awake. Uh, so in principle, you can you can you can consolidate your memories of sounds and words uh, during during the waking day. Mm -hmm. Which of those two uh, is ultimately the more effective is is something that we also don't uh, have evidence for. Uh, but in principle, uh, uh, one thing that has been done is also to look at questions like whether taking whether taking a nap can help. Uh, so instead of a night's sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also see uh, uh, consolidation processes happening just as the result of having taken a short uh, nap of less than an hour. So it would make sense to nap right after learning? Potentially, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Potentially. Yeah. Okay. And what kind of experiments are you planning to do once, once getting that grant? Uh, if we're successful with the grant, then we would be r running experiments uh, to test some of these questions, like uh, uh, um, when uh, during sleep uh, is the best time mm -hmm. to uh, to uh, to represent the material, and an important part of that grant would actually be to try to automize that process. So uh, the way experiments have been done so far requires uh, a, you know, a dedicated student to stay up all night and monitor the electrical activity of the sleeping person's brain and when the the sleep when the sleeper is in the appropriate state so for these kinds of experiments usually that's when they go into slow wave sleep so when, then the experimenter starts playing quietly the 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 new uh, the, the 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 material that had been learned the previous day and as soon as they detect that the uh, um, the sleeper is starting to wake up or moving out of slow wave sleep, then they stop playing the uh, the sounds, right? Mm -hmm. and you, and in such a way, over the course of the night, you can present uh, uh, a participant with uh, with the material that you need, and then you test them the next day. Now, that's very labor intensive, uh, and it would be very nice if you could uh, save save a poor student having to stay up all night, every night for yeah. months to. Uh, to test uh, to test lots of participants for an experiment, so the idea is to try to develop um, uh, um, detection software that will monitor the sleeping brain's activity, the EEG activity of the brain, and then, uh, um, uh, as it were, uh, th through reliable detection of okay, this, the brain is now appears to be in slow wave sleep. Uh, trigger a computer to then present the, the 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 auditory stimuli, and again monitor for the response of the brain to that that presentation, and stop if things start to look as if they they're, they're changing. Mm -hmm. So that involves some developing uh, um, various machine learning techniques uh, w with uh, with uh, um, uh, uh, people interested. I uh, also have colleagues here in Nijmegen who are interested in, in brain-computer interfaces, the idea of, uh, of being able to direct uh, uh, behavior using, using responses picked up directly from the brain. So this is a, a variant of a brain-computer interface, but then mm -hmm. for the sleeping brain uh, uh, and, 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 and these presentations of, of sounds and words. Mm -hmm. And I guess... So, oh, sorry. You know, so that's, that's, the, that's the kind of experiments that we'd be, we'd be trying to run, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I assume you could later use this technology for mass application so that people can have an app or something and 
I, I don't know. Is there something needed on the head so that? Uh, so yes. That, uh, yeah. So that's yes the other that's the other challenge of the grant yeah. is to try to make this uh, something that would be be uh, 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 yeah possible on the um, on the mass market. Mm -hmm. And so then there are all sorts of questions like trying to reduce the number of electrodes that you need uh, on the scalp. Mm -hmm. You don't really want people to have to wear. Uh, a full head electrode cap mm -hmm. with 32 electrodes or 64 electrodes. You want to be able to do it with far fewer electrodes. Yes. Uh, but then, indeed, the the longer term goal is is to try to produce some um, uh, uh, yeah, a, a marketable product that would uh, that 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 people would be happy to wear at night mm -hmm. uh, uh, and 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 benefit from. Mm -hmm. And how long would the research take? Like, how, for how long would the grant? The grant ordered? would be is a is, would be a is a four year project. Four year yeah. project. Yeah. Okay. And do you have any concrete experiments in mind already? Like, how? What do you want to try out with grammar and sounds? Uh, well, with sounds, the the idea would be to set up an experiment in the first instance to test whether uh, the the that effect that I mentioned a few minutes ago. That uh, that idea that when you've learned about a new sound, can you generalize that to um, perceiving that sound spoken by a new speaker? Mm -hmm. We want to we want to general we would want to replicate that effect. It's been shown by people that in another lab, uh, and then we can start asking questions like: Does it matter how easy or hard the sounds are uh, to learn? Mm -hmm. So I mentioned the th. Uh, example. That's a classic example of someone not having a particular sound category in their native language and having to learn a new category. Mm -hmm. And the processes that are required for learning that appear to be different from the processes required to adapt existing categories. So mm -hmm. another example would be something like uh, uh, b and p. So in in German there are bers and pers, and in Dutch there are bers and pers, and in English there are bers and pers, and across many languages in the world mm -hmm. there are these consonants, but they they vary in their acoustic realization. So what counts as a good b in uh, in 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 English uh, actually sounds like a reasonably good p in Dutch, okay. for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what sounds like a good p in English sounds actually like a bad p in Dutch because it's got too much aspiration. Mm -hmm. So uh, an English person will say pat, uh, but a Dutch person would say something like pat, with a with a with a with no aspiration on the on the initial p sound. Mm -hmm. So in that context, the Dutch person trying to improve their English doesn't have to learn a new sound like a th yes. sound, mm -hmm. but has to shift their existing categories so that they uh, um, uh, accommodate the, the, the phonetic differences in the new language. And of course, they have to do that without messing up their first language, right? Mm -hmm. They need to still be able to speak yes. Dutch or whatever the language may be. Mm -hmm. So one of the experiments we'll, that we, would, we have in mind is to actually compare in these designs the uh, sounds that are completely new versus sounds that are, you know, yes. modifications of existing mm -hmm. categories. It's quite likely that uh, the the consolidation processes that are required for one kind of sound are different from uh, those required for the other. Mm -hmm. uh, and that may mean that, uh, in the extreme, it may be that uh, representation of the, of the sounds works in only one of those cases and not in the other case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's that's great. That's really interesting research. I'm looking. I hope you get the grant, and I'm looking forward to the results. Well, of course, we we, we hope to get the grant too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, thank you so much for participating. It was it was a pleasure. <laughs>